Hey everybody, welcome to the Fishing Sailor. It wasn't that long ago that electric fishing reels were unheard of for recreational fishermen. They were strictly for people who made their living pulling fish out of the ocean. Recently, recreational fishermen have discovered there's a whole world of fish completely different than they were familiar with that live 300, 600, 900, even 2,000 feet below the surface. Some of these are fish we know from the surface, swordfish, some kinds of tuna, they move this deep. Many other fish from these depths are almost never seen by fishermen working conventional tackle at normal fishing depths. Blue line tilefish, golden tilefish, silk snapper, blackfin snapper, queen snapper, snowy grouper, wreckfish, rosefish, and many more. And they have one thing in common, they are all really delicious. In calm weather with no current, even 600 feet is reachable by conventional tackle, even with quite light tackle. Weights of 10, 16, or 24 ounces can get you down deep if the boat's not moving. Yes, it's a long way back up, but it is doable. I know, I've done it. But let the breeze pick up or a bit of current running, now you need 4 pounds, 8 pounds, even 10 pounds of weight to reach those depths. That's a lot. How many times in a day do you think you can reel 8 pounds of lead up from 900 feet to check your bait or reposition the boat? I know for me, more than once starts to hurt, and it's more like work than fun. Enter the electric fishing reel. One of the more expensive pieces of fishing gear you can buy. If you ask how much, the answer might be how much do you have? The market for these products in the United States is confused and complex. It's easy to get lost in the weeds. Since I just chopped a path through this tangle, I'll share my thoughts and learnings, and I'll help you make a choice that's best for you, even if it's quite different from mine. I was looking for something that would help me catch medium and large fish from very deep water. To put some numbers on that, I was thinking depths to 1,200 feet and fish to 75 pounds. I'm not gearing up to pull 500 pound swordfish from 2,000 feet down, as much fun as that might be. But a 40 pound tilefish from 700 feet is certainly on the menu, as is a 50 pound snowy grouper from 900. An initial look at what was available, and I found one major tackle dealer listing over 40 electric fishing reels at prices from $500 to $9,000. I quickly divided the market up in ways that helped me sort out those I was interested in from those I wasn't. Grouping by size, power, and intended use helped me avoid getting overwhelmed. The categories are completely arbitrary and all mine. The listing of products is not intended to be complete by any means, but reflected where I focused my research. All the reels I mention here have purchased links down in the comments. We might get a small commission if you buy through those links, but it won't affect your price at all. We'd appreciate it if you use those links. It's part of the reason I can take the time and effort to make these videos as interesting and informative as I can. My way of dividing this market up was by line capacity. I chose to use the number of yards of 80 pound test braid as the benchmark because that data was available for all the reels I was looking at. So let's get to the nitty gritty. The small reels. Anything less than 500 yards of 80 pound test braid. An example here would be the Daiwa Tanacom 500 or the Daiwa Seaborg 500. Although relatively inexpensive, any reel in this category was just too small for the kind of fishing I wanted to do. If I'm fishing in the weight and depth range these machines are designed for, I'll be using my conventional tackle. Moving up to medium sized reels, now our price range starts to look from $650 to $1,600. The Daiwa Tanacom 750 just bumps into this class with a capacity of 550 yards of 80 pound braid. The Seaborg 800 sits in the middle of this category with 660 yards. If I was limiting myself to things like blackfin snapper or blue line tilefish at three to 700 feet, I'd probably be all over one of these but the beef just isn't there for the deeper depths, bigger sinkers, and larger fish sizes I was setting as my target. Bumping up a good bit in price to $700 to $1,800, there are a bunch of reels that cluster in this size range that starts around 800 yards of 80 pound braid. Shimano enters the fray here with the Force Master 9000 and the Beast Master 9000, 
both of which hold just over a thousand yards of 80 pound test. Daiwa plays in this pool with the Tanagam 1000 at 880 yards and the Seaborg 1200 at 1100 yards. Ultimately, this was the group I felt was suited to my needs, and we'll dive a bit deeper into these in a minute. But first, let's take a run past the real monster killers on this list. Lindegren Pittman is the big player in this market, and they are respected as are Hooker and Crystal. Reels in this category hold 250 yards, almost a mile and a half of 80-pound line. Prices range from a bare-bones model at $3,500 to $9,000 and over. These are designed for quickly pulling up 10 pounds of lead from 2,000 feet and battling fish up to half a ton that are already half a mile away from the boat when they are first hooked. For a lot of reasons, this was just way more kit than I was looking for. Before we get into the details of features and choices, just a word about the market for these reels. For everything except the monster category, the manufacturers are all in Japan or Korea. The market for electric reels is also mostly in Asia. Until very recently, selling into the English-speaking market seems to have been kind of an afterthought. Unless you really know exactly what you're looking for and can navigate the international shopping pitfalls, I would strongly suggest you stay with a product that was imported by the authorized distributor into the U.S. You will read many stories online of people who bought a great reel on eBay at a great price only to discover the reel's display and manual is only in Japanese and that reel model has no English manual available. So sorry. After much fussing and research, I came to four reels on my final list, and even that spanned a pretty broad range of price and capability. From Daiwa, the Tanacom 1000 and the Seaborg 1200 MJ made the first cut, and from Shimano, the Force Master 9000 and the Beastmaster 9000. All four of these reels had the line capacity I was looking for, although the Tanacom 1000 just barely made the cut there. As the smallest and least powerful of the bunch, I cut it loose. The Seaborg 1200 MJ was the most expensive and arguably the most capable of this bunch. I ended up deciding that the incremental capabilities over Shimano's offerings weren't worth the extra cost given the use I was going to be putting the reel to. Choosing between the Force Master and the Beast Master was a tougher choice. About a $300 difference buys a significantly more powerful motor and a few more operational features on what looked to be essentially the same chassis. In the end, I went with more muscle and bought the Shimano Beastmaster 9000. We'll be putting that to use shortly. If you like what we say and how we present it, please subscribe. We appreciate it. You'll know right away when we have more to say. Coming up in our channel real soon, the great unboxing of the electric reel, how to load line, and fishing with an electric. We also have something completely different inexpensive trolling with hand lines for sailing cruisers who may be a bit less committed to fishing but still like to eat fresh fish. Stay tuned.